So moving forward to look at our learning theory of attachment. So over the next couple of lessons together, we're going to be looking at two different theories of attachment. Number one is learning theory, and second of all is evolutionary theory. On the left, you can see um, the process of classical conditioning. Uh, there's lots of new keywords in there for you. So unconditioned stimulus, unconditioned response, neutral stimulus, conditioned stimulus, and conditioned response. I'm gonna be going through those with you uh, in the next couple of slides. In terms of evolutionary theory, so this won't be in your next lesson, but the lesson afterwards. And this is based on the idea that um, attachment is an adapted and evolved behavior we attach to caregivers and we attach to infants because it's useful for us it helps us to survive so just to recap with you what i've said on the last uh, screen on the last slide uh, there's two theories which explain why we attach today we're going to look at learning theory and it's really important to remember that conditioning means learning so a behavior that's conditioned is a behavior that's learnt. So a key study that we will uh, it will be useful today and also in future lessons when we come to our approaches topic is the key study of Pavlov. Um, so to recap some of the key words that we saw on the last slide, um, before conditioning, during conditioning and after conditioning. So these are our three stages of classical conditioning. Before conditioning, an unconditioned stimulus leads to an unconditioned response. A neutral stimulus leads to no response. Then during the conditioning stage, an unconditioned stimulus in addition to a neutral stimulus gives an unconditioned response. This pairing happens multiple times again and again and again. An association occurs between the two stimuli, i.e. the unconditioned stimulus and the neutral stimulus. And then after conditioning, the conditioned stimulus gives the conditioned response. So let's add a little bit of context in here. Um, Pavlov, in his key study, um, was looking at the conditioning of um, uh, conditioning of food with a bell. So before conditioning, he presented the food to the dog, and the dog salivated. Uh, also before conditioning, he presented the dog with a bell, and there was no response. During the conditioning stage, he presented the food and the bell together, and this led to the process of salivation. He did this again and again and again and again, and as you can imagine, after he'd done this multiple times, the bell then led to the conditioned response of salivation, even without the food being presented. So the dog had learned to salivate to the bell um, through that process of conditioning. So how do we then apply this to attachment? So before conditioning, same idea. So you've got your unconditioned stimulus leading to an unconditioned response. This time it's the food and this leads to happiness. So babies don't need to learn to feel happy when they're presented with food. It just happens naturally. It's a reflex response. The neutral stimulus is the primary caregiver. So this is usually the mother. And again, before learning, before conditioning, this produces no response. Now, during the conditioning stage, we have the food presented with the primary caregiver. So the primary caregiver, usually the mother, feeds the baby. This happens multiple times, again and again and again. An association occurs and that baby feels happy. Now, after conditioning, even in the absence of food, the conditioned stimulus, so the primary caregiver, still gives the conditioned response, which again is happiness. And this is what the attachment's based on. This makes the infant want to see the mother again, and it creates this feeling of happiness whenever the infant sees the mother. There we've got it with some pictures. So again, you can see the same idea, the food leading to happiness, the mother and the food presented together, the mother feeds the baby, which leads to a happy baby. And finally, after conditioning, the mother itself or the mother alone uh, still produces that feeling of happiness. And again, that's what the attachment is based on. So, uh, that's the end of the screencast for today. Um, without looking at the notes or this, on this PowerPoint or the pre-reading, you need to make sure that you can explain the four stages of classical conditioning, two before conditioning, one during conditioning, and one after conditioning. Give the keywords at each stage, explain the difference between a stimulus and a response, and explain what's meant by conditioning.